नमस्कार वेलकम टू सी टी एस ब्लॉक टू यूनिट फाइव पार्ट सेकेंड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट हाउ टू ऑर्गेनाइज द टूअर एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल टॉक अबाउट द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पॉन्डीचेरी और पुडुचेरी अवे फ्रॉम द हसल एंड बसल ऑफ बिग सिटीज पुडुचेरी इज द क्वाइट लिटल टाउन ऑन द सदर्न कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया अनमिस्टिकेबल फ्रेंच कनेक्शन द थ्री लाइन बॉलीवाड्स the quaint colonial heritage buildings the spiritual sceneries the endless stretches of unspoiled virgin beaches and backwaters and a surprising choice of restaurants serving a melange of cuisines provide a heady mix of experience that draws travelers from near and far to the city it is the perfect place to come if you want to take the pace of life down a few notches If we discuss the profile, the Union Territory Pondicherry comprises of four coastal regions, namely Puducherry, Karai Canal, Mahe, Yanam. Puducherry and Karai Canal are situated on the east coast of Tamil Nadu, Yanam in Andhra Pradesh, and Mahe on the west coast in Kerala. The city of Puducherry is the capital of this Union Territory. It lies on the east coast about 162 kilometers from south of Chennai located on the Coromandel coast of the Bay of Bengal. There are no hills of the forest in this region. The major soil types found here are are red paralitic, black clay and coastal alluvial. The main spoken languages are Tamil दो तेलुगू मलयालम इंग्लिश एंड फ्रेंच आर स्पोकन बाय अ कंसिडरेबल नंबर ऑफ पीपल ऑल दो द मेजोरिटी ऑफ पॉपुलेशन इज हिंदू देर आर क्वाइट अ नंबर ऑफ क्रिश्चियंस एंड मुस्लिम्स वेर एज जेन्स सिक्स एंड बुद्धिस्ट आर फ्यू इन कंपेरिजन पुडुचेरी एज मेनी पीपल फील हैज अ डिस्टिंग स्पिरिचुअल वाइब्रेशन स्टोरीज ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट सेजेस कम डाउन थ्रू आउट इट हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम द अर्लीस्ट डेज Puducherry has a special vibe not felt anywhere else in India. It is a blend of spiritual aura, colonial heritage, Tamil culture and the cosmopolitan flair of many nationalities in a small but varied own. This inherent ambiance of Pondi becomes most evident in the oldest part of the town which flanks the seashore boulevard. The colonial buildings some of which date back to the 18th century stretch along a grid of clean straight street which house french institutions hotels guest houses restaurants boutiques and private homes including the sprawling premises of famous shri orbindo ashram visitors to this area are greeted by mellow hues of cream yellow pink and grey compound walls interspread by flamboyant bougainvillea busting over gates and walls of courtyards quiet beaches and peaceful resorts in the north and south of the city balance the town's busy yet easy going life pondi not only offers its own special attraction but also doubles as the perfect base to explore the rich destinations of tamil nadu that surrounds it some destinations namely Oruvelle the international city of unity the imposing renzi fort the holy temple towns of kanjipuram thiruvannamalai and chidambaram the heritage sculptures and magnificent rock temples of mamlapuram or mahabalipuram and the cool lush hill stations of your fort and kodai canal should make to your to do list puducherry is best accessible by road from chennai Bangalore and even from Kerala. Chennai has an international airport and it is easily reachable via a national highway from Puducherry and offers good transit hotels in the vicinity of travelers arriving late at night. Puducherry has a wide choice of hotels to choose from. Beach resort for tourists and family, heritage hotels for those who want to experience something out of ordinary. high class commercial hotels for the corporate visitors and the neat ashram guest houses for the spiritual seekers restaurant serves a rich variety of french indian asian and continental food and also has many international chains of fast food puducherry is fast becoming a favorite shopping destination of the southern metropolitan cities 
It is easy on your purse with low or no taxes. Although it is known for its traditional doll making, textiles and silks, it is also the birthplace of several world-class brands in leather, pottery, aromatics, fashion and handmade paper. These excellent products have become renowned solely on the merit of their superb quality. A new trend is the proliferation of exquisite decor boutiques and export quality of antique furniture galleries. However, as you shall see, the Pondi experience is considerably more than any kind of these unique and clustered aspects. It is an experience that captivates all kinds of visitors from those who want to take in the sites or shops, eat and stay on their own terms. The nickname Pondi sums up the shared feeling of belonging and having come home. The colonial past of Puducherry is hard to miss. Even by the casual walker on the promenade beach, there stands the statue of Francois de Plex. Not too far is one of Jean of Arc. It's a trip down France as one crosses symmetrically aligned streets in Pondicherry. The Portuguese have been here, so have the Dutch, the Danes and the English. By the 18th century, this tiny fishing village has turned into a grand port city. The French first set foot here in 1670 and left a part of them when their undisturbed rule finished in 1954. Not much has changed since. The history has become punctuated. The air is filled with nostalgia and the present is living up a heritage that speaks so much. A trip to Puducherry is like a journey in time with a vibrant presence celebrating its interesting parts. Its history goes back before Roman times. It factually started with the arrival of French in 1673, who founded the town and built it to its present form during the two and a half century they occupied it. Puducherry is the French interpretation of the original name Puducherry meaning new settlement. Many pilgrims have shared the town's hospitality on their way to the temple town of Rameshwaram, thus enriching its culture. If we discuss the early period or the history of this town, it is quite vibrating. The known history of Puducherry dates back to the beginning of our era. Puducherry also had a flourishing maritime history. Excavation at Arikamedu, about 70, 7, about 7 kilometers south of Puducherry town, show that Romans came here to trade in the 1st century AD. Their trade included dyed textiles, potteries and semi-precious stones. The findings are now displayed in the Puducherry Museum. The ancient Roman scripts mention one of the trade centers along the Indian coast as Paduka or Paduke, which historians believe to be present in Puducherry. Very little is known about the early period of Puducherry. The Bahur place issued in the 8th century speaks of a Sanskrit university which was here from an earlier period. Legend has it that the sage Agastya established his ashram here and the place was known as Agastivapuram. An inscription found here near the Vedhapuraswara temple hints at the credibility of this legend. At the beginning of the 4th century AD, the Pondicherry area was a part of Pallava kingdom of Kanjipuram. Eventually, Pondicherry was occupied by different dynasties of the south. In the 10th century AD, the Cholas of Tanjavur took over, only to be replaced by the Pandya kingdom in the 13th century. After a brief invasion by the Muslim rulers of the north who established the Sultanate of Madurai, the Vijayanagar Empire took control of almost all of the south of India till 1638, when the Sultan of Bijapur began his rule over Jinji. If we talk about the foreign contacts, unlike the Arab merchants who had been sailing the coasts of India since times immemorial, the impact of European contact had had, 
had far reaching consequences in terms of establishment and in the end the occupation of entire subcontinent in 1497 the portuguese discovered the route to india and began to expand their influence by occupying coastal areas and building harbor towns which soon extended more than 12000 miles of coastlines at the beginning of 16th century portuguese established a factory in puducherry but a century later they were compelled to leave the city by the ruler of jinji who find them unfriendly after that the danes set up an establishment and likewise the dutch while the latter set up trading posts in porto novo and kudalor the french who had trading centuries trading centers in the north mahe and madras were invited to open a trading center in puducherry by the new ruler of jinji to compete with the dutch on 14 february 1673 belanger a french officer took up a residence in the danish lodge in puducherry and the french period of puducherry began In 1674, Francois Martin, the first governor, started to build Pondicherry and transformed it from a small fishing village into a flourishing port town. In 1693, the Dutch took over and fortified the town considerably. But four years later, Holland and France signed a peace treaty, and the French regained Pondicherry in 1699. In 18th century the town was laid out on a grid pattern and grew considerably. Able governors like Lenoir and Dumas and an ambitious governor Duplat expanded the Puducherry area and made it a large and a rich town. But his ambition clashed with the English interest in India as well as the local kingdoms and a period of skirmishes and political intrigues began. Under the command of Marquis de Bizy Chantelle, the Plex army controlled the area between Hyderabad and Cape Comorin successfully. But then in 9 in 1744, a dauntless British officer Robert Clive, who arrived in India, dashed the hopes of the Plex to create a French colonial India. After a defeat and failed peace talks, the Plex was recalled to France in 1754. In spite of a treaty between English and French not to interfere in the local politics, the disturbances continued. Subsequently, France sent Lely to Dendel to regain the French losses and chase the English out of India. After the initial success by the French, they raised Fort St. David in the Kudlor to the ground. But strategic mistakes by Lely led to the loss of Hyderabad region and the siege of Pondicherry in 1760. In 1761, Puducherry was razed to the ground in revenge and lay in ruins for about four years. The French had lost their hold in the South India. In 1765, the town is returned to France after a peace treaty with England and Europe. Governor Law Du Lauristin set to rebuild the town on the old foundation, and after five months, 200 European and 2,000 Tamil houses had been erected. During the next 50 years Puducherry changed hands between France and England with the regularity of wars and peace treaties. Only after the year 1816 the French regained permanent control of Puducherry but the town had lost much of its former glory. Successive governors improved the town's infrastructure, industry, law and education over the next 130 years. In 1947 the English left India for good but it was not until 1954 that the French handed Puducherry over to an independent India. After independence on November 1, 1954 the French possessions in India the facto transformed the Indian Union and Puducherry become a union territory. About 280 years of French rule finally came to an end. But it was only in 1963 that Puducherry officially became an integral part of India after the French Parliament in Paris ratified the treaty with India. Puducherry became a union territory but not a separate state. 
a union territory has its own government but falls directly under the central government in New Delhi. Though a UT also has an elected chief minister and cabinet members and laws and legislative regulations made in these areas have to get sanctioned or need to be ratified by the central government or the centre. The centre is represented by Lieutenant Governor who resides at the Raj Nivas near the park, the former palace of the French Governor. Puducherry still has a large number of Tamil residents with French passports, whose ancestors were in French governmental service and who choose to remain French at the time of independence. Apart from the monuments pertaining to the French period, there is also the French consulate in Puducherry and several cultural organizations including Fuyo de Sudet for war veterans of the French army. Among the cultural organizations, the French Institute, the Alliance Francaise and the Ecole Francaise, the Extreme Orient are noteworthy. If we want to look into the chronological order, we can have a look of this. In 1521, arrival of Portuguese, 1618, Dutch textile trading. In 1624, Danish established shops. In 1664, Colbert founds the French East India Company. In 1674, French buy the city from the governor of the Jinji fortress, vassal of the Muslim king of Bijapur. 1686, establishment of the first trading post on the Koramandal coast. In 1693, the Dutch retake the city and begin to lay out the streets in the grid pattern. In 1700, French trading post, the city has its peak with Dupieks. In 1761, English domination, the city is destroyed. In 1763, French trading post, the city is rebuilt. In 1778, English domination. 1783 French trading post, in 1793 English domination, 1815 French trading post, 1954 transferred the facto of French possessions to India, in 1962 signature of treaty of cession of French possessions between France and India. Now let's move forward and understand a bit of the introduction. Puducherry ambience is not influenced or dominated by one fabulous heritage monument or by amazing natural surroundings except perhaps the sea. Puducherry itself is heritage as town as a conglomerate of different cultural influences. These influences find expression in its architecture and the street scrapes, in its people and visitors and in a subtle feeling which is peculiarity of Pondi. The town is planned on a grid pattern from its inception. Cities like Arnakulam in Kerala, also built in a grid pattern, were planned and built much later, while its twin town Cochin had developed at the same time as Puducherry in a more clustered manner. The town was divided into French section and a Tamil section and with its respective population, and architectural differences and each with its own particular streetscapes. In French town, the roads are flanked by colonial style buildings with long compound walls and safety gates behind which life unfolds. The facades have often vertical columns and tall windows and are colored cream, yellow and pink. In Tamil town, the streets are lined by verandas and extended porches where its residents would gather and passing guests would spend the night. The colours here are green, blue and brown while the facades convey horizontal and low features. Sites are many fold with pastel coloured churches and bright temple towers, genre of arcs, heavenward gauge views with the tall carved pillars from Jinji at the seafront. Cricket competes with Petonkyu and the park becomes a green peaceful oasis where these complementary contrasts meet. Puducherry has an interesting spiritual heritage too and is a blend of Eastern and Western culture and of ancient and modern spiritual disciplines. These movements converge in a practical manner 
in the twin communities of Sri Aurobindo Ashram and Auroville. If we talk about the architecture, the street facades are usually characterized by a continuous construction with high garden walls and elaborate gates. The facades are divided into small panels by the use of vertical pilasters and horizontal cornices. The windows are usually arched and have wooden louver shutters. The balconies are often built over iron brackets. Parapets are simple and at times feature terracotta pot designs. High ceilings, tall arc doors and the windows with louvers dominate the space inside the houses. Floors are of polished and has colored cement or the tiles. Colored Belgian glass is set in arched wooden frames above doors and porticos. If we talk about the architecture in the French quarters, the French part of the town was built along the sea on the sand dunes. It is characterized by long wide street with stately colonial styled buildings. The residential buildings are comparatively simple, solid yet varied. They have flat roofs and inner courtyard with garden and colonnade porticos serve a double function of protecting from the sun and rain and serving as a transition space to the rest of the house. The public buildings usually are surrounded by a large fenced-in compound. At times, French models were used which were adapted to suit local conditions. These buildings often have an impressive stair to an elevated ground floor and a colonnaded facade. If we talk about the architecture of Tamil quarters, Originally, the native Tamil town developed around the nucleus of a group of temples in the northern section and the streets were laid in an east-west direction. The row of houses along these streets stood back to back. These streetscapes with continuous wall-to-wall -wall construction vary much in character with that of French. Their exterior facades often feature a street veranda with platform and lean to roof over wooden posts, the thalavaram, a social extension of the house, and a semi-public portico called the Tinai, is supported by round wooden pillars with masonry benches for visitors. These talking streets, so-called because of their intimate scale and interactive nature, are typical of the vernacular Tamil architecture and the entire street stretch is homogeneous because of connecting elements like lean-to-roof, cornicles, plasters and engaged columns and ornamental sparafates defining the skyline. The tinai or the portico marks the transition space after which the house is entered through a finely carved wooden door and once inside the door opens to the courtyard Mutram becomes the central space around which the various other spaces are functionally arranged. The open Mutram is planned by a covered space on one side or on both sides with wooden columns usually meant for an interaction among the family or with the intimate guests. The rear courtyard is in immediate proximity to the kitchen is reserved for the services and utilities. Usually within the intimate fabric of the Tamil town, an interesting morphology of built form is observed, ranging from simple country tiled, single storied houses of the old Hindu quarters to the two story houses with considerable colonial influence of the later Hindu and Christian quarters to the more elaborately detailed houses of the Muslim quarters. On a whole, a conspicuous synthesis of two varying styles is evident, especially in case of two-story Tamil buildings, where the ground floor is usually of the Tamil type with thinai, thalavaram and carved doors, while the first floor displays French influence showing plasters, columns with capitals, arched windows, plaster decorations and end ornament elements. In French buildings, the local influence is obvious in the use of madras, terrace flat roofs, wooden balconies and sloping tiled roofs. It is the result of this cross influence of building patterns that gives this old town its distinct architectural vocabulary 
which can be termed pondicherryness or the puducherryness now by this you have came to know a lot about puducherry its history its architecture and you came to know that it is a small city or a town wherein you have to plan your itinerary or a tour accordingly you can plan it more in a walking way or with the help of cars and cabs but you need to take care in account the lots of minute details discussed above here is the example of a program for the full day tour of the pondicherry which includes visit to the shri arbindo ashram manakula vyanagar temple pondicherry museum which is closed on monday chunambar water sports complex handmade paper factory you can have a lunch at some nearby restaurants or a cafe sacred heart of jesus church auroville matri mandir you can only have an out of view for interview you have to take an appointment panchvati hanuman temple you also have to note the tour programs proposed above are liable to be changed or cancelled if the demand is not found adequate the manager of the tours ptdc or the pondicherry tourism development corporation may be contacted for further information and reservation at the below address so here it's the address pick up place and the contact details in case you want to book a tour with pondicherry tourism development corporation the other places which you can visit considering the time limitation in mind is manakula vyanga temple which takes around 1 hour the arbindo ashram it can takes around 30 minutes to visit pondicherry museum will also take around 30 to uh, 30 minutes to 1 hour bharati park or the governmental park mahatma gandhi statue it's a long road and a walking road pondicherry or the promenade beach alongside now if you talk about shopping in pondicherry pondicherry is a shoppers delight offering an array of shops boutiques and department stores for the passionate shopper pondicherry being an octro free destination for everything the prices of whatever you buy while shopping in pondicherry will naturally be cheaper any trip to pondicherry will remain incomplete unless you indulge in unrestrained shopping in pondicherry at several shopping complexes and markets you can buy almost anything from cars to consumer goods at pondicherry although nowadays the ormindo ashram factory produces articles like candles and scent sticks papers etc which are very popular among tourists visiting the land enjoy an extremely enchanting experience of shopping in puducherry whereby you can buy some of the following specialties available here like textiles famous as a center of producing household linen and garment textiles in satin twill corduroy poplin chambray oxford cambric and khadi a home spun fabric puducherry is a fine place to purchase fabrics of various kinds like pottery pondicherry and auroville produces the excellent centers of ceramic articles and other clayware the golden bridge and the rare stone art are particularly famous for selling unique earthen ware which are both contemporary and pondicherryan you can also buy lots of leather products in pondicherry leather is made in the traditional way with the result the leather goods are carefully finished innovative products which are very popular among buyers the boutiques of pondicherry the boutiques of pondicherry are scattered all over the town and they welcome shoppers with the fragrant scents of incense and perfume candles which let further charm to the wonderful ambience a wide variety of products are available here ranging from stylish garments semi precious stones perfumes handmade incense candles embossed with real petals marble skill silks and aromatherapy products french antique furniture and tibetan handicrafts are also on offer handmade paper since 1959 the orbindo ashram factory has continued producing handmade paper 
and the rich texture and the color of these papers have made them one of the most sought after product while shopping in Puducherry. Now there are lots of tips for the tourists as well. The climate in Puducherry is generally humid as it is located in the coastal areas of South India. The climate is mostly warm and plain cottons or cotton synthetic blinds are the most practical and the coolest wear in summers. It is best to avoid thick clothes that don't breathe. In, the, in summer, hats and sunglasses are recommend, recommended for the protection from the harsh sun. When traveling during the monsoons, a collapsive umbrella comes in handy. Taxi and auto drivers don't expect tips but fare is not uniform. If they go through a great deal of trouble to get you your destination, they may ask tip about Rs 50 to 100 per day, depending up on the distance travelled. During the winter months, sweaters and light jackets are required. For functions, men can wear formal suits, whereas women can choose skirts and tops. Trackers and travellers going on any outdoor adventure should bring a day pack that will hold a sweater, camera and a water bottle. A good pair of binocular and sunglasses that blocks out ultraviolet rays are advised. Also carry strong sun blocks, swing kit, wet wipes, pocket knife with a can opener, lock and key for each duffel or bag, high power impact resistant flashlight and a spare battery. For charging electric powered equipment, bring a converter and adapter. In India, the electric current is 220 volts, 50 hertz, alternating AC, and Euro plugs are mostly used for the wall sockets. Here are a few tips for tipping in India as well. You can have a look. In the above slides, you have already taken care of lots of tips to be taken care while visiting in India and all the health hazards, illness, and the tricks while traveling to Puducherry. Now here is the some tips to remember while visiting the religious monuments. Visiting the religious monuments demands respect. For all the religions, removing shoes is necessary before entering a shrine. Though sometimes cloth over shoes are provided for a small charge. Drinking alcoholic beverages on the premises or speaking in a raised voice is not permissible. Some structures are off limit to visitors who do not practice the faith. One should not try to force or bribe to enter such places. Be sure to cover your head when you enter a mosque. When entering a mosque, you are supposed to step right foot first into the courtyard. To enter a holy shrine, women should wear a sari, a long skirt or a dress or a trousers. Travel in Muslim community calls for even more discretion. Women should consider wearing a silwar kameez or loose pants and a long blouse. In some Hindu and Jain temples, all leather products inside the shrine like shoes, belts, handbags, camera cases, etc. are prohibited. Many temples also expect visitors to purify themselves by washing their hands and feet under a tap or tank available therefore before entering. No visitor in a Sikh Gurudwara should keep his feet pointing towards the holy book or step over anyone sitting in the prayer or meditation. Usually sitting on the floor of a Hindu or Sikh temple with cross leg with feet tuckered beneath is the best. We would like to thank Pondicherry Tourism for giving some insightful information for this video. I hope you have now understood and explored the Pondicherry Tourism and you can plan a different kinds of itineraries keeping the experiences available in Pondicherry or Puducherry in mind. Thank you for viewing. Namaskar.